Hello everyone, CoinHound here. Today we'll be taking a look at the Zachary Taylor Presidential Silver Medal from the U.S. Mint. This medal was just released a few weeks ago, and it is the 12th medal in the series, as Zachary Taylor was the 12th President of the United States. Okay, so here is the Zachary Taylor Presidential Silver Medal. Uh, the design of these presidential silver medals are uh, generally replicas of the peace medals that were given out uh, at the time uh, that each president was in office. Uh, the peace medal program was a program by which these uh, medals would be minted and they would be distributed out to uh, Indian tribes, uh, Indian chiefs, uh, during negotiations, during meetings, as a sign of peace and friendship uh, between the Native American tribes and the American government. Earlier in this series of mine on presidential silver medals, I did have a video where I kind of went over the history of the presidential silver medals and the role they played and the like. Uh, and I will put that in the uh, description section for anyone who might be uh, curious to see that. Uh, so when it comes to Zachary Taylor, uh, this is basically an exact replica of the medal that was issued during his presidency. Uh, so on the front there, we have Zachary Taylor, President of the United States, 1849, which was the year of his inauguration. And then uh, we flip it over here. And uh, this is the reverse design. And you can see it uh, building on that theme of peace and friendship. It's literally engraved on the reverse design there. Uh, and then you had a peace pipe and a tomahawk and then two hands shaking. The one on the left re representing uh, the American interests, uh, the one on the right, Native Americans. And uh, these medals are, uh, in my opinion, uh, quite beautiful. The designs are relatively simple. They're clean. Uh, but I, I do like very much the historical tie-in. So let's turn it back here uh, to the front side. There you are. And let's just go in a little bit closer. And that looks really good. Uh, I am working with a new phone. I just replaced my Google Pixel 3a uh, with a Pixel 6 uh, this past week. Uh, and I do like the pixels because uh, they do have really good cameras on them, uh, even though they're not a high-end phone price-wise. Uh, so anyways, you can see the, the design there, uh, just uh, nicely crafted, uh, beautiful appearance. And uh, as we move on here, I hope you'll stay with me. I'm going to uh, take a look at one of the original medals, and then uh, we'll look at the uh, story of Zachary Taylor briefly and uh, then we'll look at the current sales figures for the presidential silver medal uh, program. So before we get into the biography I just wanted to uh, show a sample of an authentic uh, Zachary Taylor peace medal. This one is from 1849. Uh, if I remember correctly I pulled it off the coin appraiser uh, website and uh, you can see the metal here. It's got a little bit of wear on it. Uh, but you can see how the design is exactly the same uh, as the metal I just showed you. You note also that there is a, a hole in the top of the metal. Uh, as I said, these metals were oftentimes distributed out to uh, Indian tribes, to Indian chiefs. And uh, they were often were intended to be worn uh, like a necklace. So there was a hole put in the top and then a cord would be run through uh, so that someone could wear that uh, around their neck. Uh, as you can see at the top of the screen, uh, this particular medal uh, is appraised at uh, a price of $18,800. Needless to say, I do not have one of these uh, in my collection. Now, when it comes to the life of Zachary Taylor, as we said previously, he was the 12th president of the United States. He was born in 1784 and uh, died in 1850 uh, in the midst of the second year of his presidency. He was born uh, on the East Coast, but his family, when he was quite young, moved out to Kentucky. As an adult, uh, he joined the U.S. Army and served as an Army officer for 41 years, rising to the rank of Major General. 
uh, his old uh, sorry his nickname was Old Rough and Ready. Now the Mexican American War uh, brought him uh, fame and brought him to the attention of the American people. Uh, he was one of the commanding generals during that war and had a series of victories, and he played a uh, a big role uh, in the victory uh, in the war overall. And so he was able to springboard uh, that popularity uh, into the presidency, uh, running as a nominee of the Whig Party. Now, during the short time he was president, uh, one of his goals, perhaps his main goal, was to try to, uh, as it notes on the screen, diffuse growing sectionalism or division uh, within the country, division between the North and South. Uh, he was a slave owner. Uh, he did, uh, however, oppose the expansion of slavery westward. Uh, one of the big controversial issues at the time was what to do with the lands that had been won during the Mexican-American War, uh, what is today the southwest of the United States. There was a big debate um, about their entry into the Union and would they be slave, would they be free. And uh, it, it was a heated debate at times and... Uh, had potential uh, to pull the country apart. Uh, Henry Clay, uh, a member of the House of Representatives, would be instrumental in forging a compromise, uh, but Taylor would not live uh, to see that compromise come to fruition. Uh, he uh, would die in the summer of 1850, uh, basically about a year and a half into his first term, and uh, in July he had come down with a, a stomach ailment, and uh, within a week, he was dead. Okay, So uh, it was his successor, uh, Vice President Millard Fillmore, who stepped into the presidency, who ended up uh, signing the laws associated with the Compromise of 1850 uh, that helped resolve uh, those disagreements. Uh, the agreement was as follows. One, California would come in as a free state. Uh, there would be uh, a couple territories created in the remaining lands that would determine their own fate with regard to slavery. Uh, the slave trade would be banned in Washington, D.C., and there would be a, a stricter Fugitive Slave Act enforced. So anyways, that's the story of Zachary Taylor. And uh, just to look quickly at uh, his historical rankings, uh, C-SPAN, uh, the cable channel, every few years does a survey of presidential historians uh, to have them rate uh, the presidents by their performance in office. And you can see the rankings there from right to left, uh, 2000, 2009, 2017, 2021. And you can see Zachary Taylor has generally uh, fallen in around the 30 to 35 uh, amongst the presidents. And we've, we're on our 46th president, so for 2021 being ranked 35th, that puts him basically uh, in the bottom, just about the bottom quarter uh, of the presidents. Uh, so a short presidency. Can't say he accomplished a whole lot. Can't say he messed up a whole lot. Uh, and uh, that's where he stands ranking-wise. For those of you that are curious about the ranking system and who uh, sits atop the ranking system, uh, I'll put that up on the screen here. You can see Abraham Lincoln coming in at number one consistently over the last 20 years. Uh, George Washington, two. And then you can read down the list, Franklin Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, Dwight Eisenhower, and so on. So anyways, thank you uh, for coming along today, and um, I hope you all have a great day, a great evening. This is Coinhound.